Having discussed heaps in a bit of detail, we're going to go back to our original data structure that we were considering, which was a priority queue, and assess how well does our data structure accomplish its goal of implementing the methods of that data structure. So our methods were insert and extract max and the heap implementations both took log of s time where s was the number of elements in the data structure. It's pretty good. Let's talk about some alternative implementations. Our first alternative implementation is just an array. And this is actually very easy to perform some of these operations. So initialization is really straightforward. We just set the length of the data structure to be zero, length here corresponding to the number of elements in the data structure. Insertion, inserting into an array, well, you just increase the size of the array and then put the new element at the end. Again, very straightforward. We could make this more sophisticated and implement it using our table doubling scheme that we discussed in the table doubling unit. And in that situation, the method would still take an expected case of constant time, so there's no concerns there. How about extracting the max? And here's where we're gonna have to pay for our benefits we've gained so far. For extracting max, for an unsorted array, the way that we have to do that is iterate over the entire array and find the maximum. The way we're going to do that here is we're going to move the maximum element to the end of the array. So we're going to loop through the first n minus one elements. And if the element we are inspecting is larger than the one currently at the end, we will swap them and move that new largest element to the end. This saves us a bit of storage and is a bit of a convenient way to extract the maximum. So after we make the largest element at the end, we then access the element, reduce the length and return the element. So these methods are really straightforward. The first one here is in theta of one. The next one is in theta of one. And the last one is in theta of s, where s is the number of elements in the array. So this is one implementation. If you look, we have a better functionality in the insert method and a worse functionality in the extract max method. Interesting little trade-off there where we can gain some runtime advantages in the insertion method and lose some runtime advantages in the extract max. Now let's compare another implementation. Our second implementation is a sorted array implementation. Again, the constructor is going to take constant time, so that's nice and easy. To insert an element into a sorted array, well, we can literally copy paste all of the code from sorted insert that we analyzed in the probabilistic analysis unit. And this was in expected case and worst case of theta of the number of elements, but a best case of theta of one. The best case occurred when the element we were inserting was larger than every element in the array already. Lastly, we need to extract the maximum. If we have an sorted array, the maximum element will always be at the end. And therefore our, our extract max method here will be in theta of one. And now we again encounter an interesting trade-off where we have gained some benefits in the extract max method and lost some benefits in the insert method. So if we're trying to understand these data structures and how they impact runtimes, maybe we ought to reinvestigate a method that we used when we were talking about heaps, that method being heap sort. So let's talk about priority queue sort, where we have made no assumptions about what the data structure is yet. So we begin by saying, what is the runtime? T of n. Well, it's the same as what we did before. It's the sum from i equals one to n of the time it takes to insert as a function of the size of the data structure, plus the sum from i equals one to n of the time it takes to extract the maximum as a function of the size of the data structure. This code is identical to the code we examined for heap sort. We've just now abstracted the idea into being a data structure called D that we are then inserting elements into and extracting maximum elements from. And let's suppose first that we are using our array implementation. In the array implementation, we had that T of insert was constant and the time it took to extract the max, the maximum element was linear. So in this case, exactly like we saw before, the summations there can be re-expressed in terms of the size of the data structure. I can express the runtime here. T of n is equal to the sum from s equals one to n of c plus the sum from s equals one to n of cs. And again, that last one only works out nicely 
because of the fact that we are incrementing s by one or decrementing s by one. In the original loop here, notice it was i equals n down to one, and that is a bit of a different thing than i equals one to n. So this is a fragment of the fact that we are always only removing one element, and so we can re-express it in this way by switching the order of the summation. Now, let's analyze the code. This is about the easiest code we could have. The first summation there takes c n time. The next one takes c times n times n plus 1 all over 2 because it is an arithmetic sum. And this is all in theta of n squared. Now, let us discuss the sorted array implementation and see how that works. We have a sorted array implementation. And here, t of insert as a function of s was linear, and the time it took to extract the maximum was constant. So if we're analyzing this, our runtime t of n is equal to the sum from s equals 1 to n of cs plus the sum from s equals 1 to n of c. And this is actually the exact same sum we saw above, it's just in the opposite order. So we get c times n times n plus 1 all over 2 plus cn, which is in theta of n squared. So both of our alt alternative implementations that were implemented using bland arrays without our heap structure being preserved take quadratic time, and our heap implementation took n log n time, so it was a slight improvement by using the heap over these two data structures. However, that is not always the case if we were to just perform certain methods. For example, if all I need to do is insert almost always, and I rarely would ever need to extract the maximum element, then maybe using a basic array would be a better way to implement this priority queue. Conversely, if I need to perform lots of extractions after I built my data structure, but I rarely needed to perform insertions, then the sorted array implementation might be better. We have cataloged all of that into this nice little table here to compare our three implementations. We have the heap implementation, which we hedge our bets between the two methods. They both take log of s. And then we have our array implementation where we gain serious benefits in insertion while losing something in extract max. And then sorted array is the exact opposite. And just for completeness, we included how long it takes to sort for all of those to show that heap is, because it is balancing those two things, is a more efficient data structure. Hiding behind my head, all we have is that s is the number of elements in the priority queue and n is the number of elements being sorted, just to give more clarity to what those are. So that is two alternative implementations that have some benefits, but unfortunately, they, neither of them are better at sorting than the heap implementation that we've already discussed.